alles Lebens Schwache geht in der Natur unfehlbar zugrunde. Wir Menschen haben gegen dieses Gesetz der natürlichen Auslese in den letzten Jahrzehnten furchtbar gesündigt. Wir haben unwertes Leben nicht nur erhalten, wir haben ihm auch Vermehrung gewährt. Die Nachkommen dieser Kranken sahen so aus, die tiefer stehen als jedes Tier. So this was a Darwinian concept. Yes. And also a Malthusian concept, very much Malthusian. Malthusian? Thomas Malthus, who said that there was a shortage of resources. English philosopher, so there was a yes, shortage. Yes, but, but the Nazi, they relied on Darwin. They relied on Darwin. Yes, Darwin and German scientists. Patients were led down this hallway to Nazi doctors who decided who would live and who would die. They were accompanied by 15, um, 15 nurses. Nurses, yes. Nurses, male and female nurses. So nurses were helping lead them to their doom. Yes. So were the prisoners told they were taking a shower? Yes, they were taking a shower, and here was one or two showers. So how many people were brought into this room? 60 to 70. So what is this? This is the dissection table. Do you ever think to yourself, the sane ones were the ones lying here having their brains removed, the insane one was Dr. Gorgas and all the other people no, did. No, I don't think that, because I think um, those people who killed here, they were very sane, they, because they had their purposes. They had purposes? Yes. I don't think they were insane. They had two crematory ovens. I see. And they killed about 70 people. A day. So a day, so they had... Um, That's barely enough time. And they, 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 only, they only killed from Monday to Friday. So... Because the people who were doing the killing needed to have the weekend off. If you met Dr. Gorgas today, what would you say to him? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think that it's my, my role to, to tell him something. It's difficult to describe how it felt to walk through such a haunting place, to know that these cold stone and tile walls were the last things the victims of Hadamar ever saw. I wanted to explore this connection further, so I met with the author of From Darwin to Hitler, Dr. Richard Weikart. Hitler and many of the physicians that carried out this program were very fanatical Darwinists and particularly they wanted to apply Darwinism to society. Was wir uns unter der deutschen Jugend der Zukunft wünschen, ist etwas anderes, als was die Vergangenheit sich gewünscht hat. Wir müssen einen neuen Menschen haben. Auch das unser Volk nicht an den typischen Degenerationserscheinungen dieser neuen Zeit Runde geht. That many of these people in the 19-teens, 1920s, who were putting forward some of these ideas about racism were considered the leading, uh, so leading scientists. Uh, these were Darwinists who were taken seriously by fellow academics. It's but not to say that all academics believed it. These leading academics, were there any of them who were Americans? There were plenty of Americans uh, who were saying similar kinds of things. Not only were Americans saying such things, they were pioneers in this fledgling science known as eugenics. They thought they could help evolution along by sterilizing the so-called feeble-minded and prohibiting them from getting married. Physicians who are aware of the history of 20th century American medicine harbor some, um, uh, some bad feelings towards Darwinists because of eugenics. Uh, and the eugenics, which was a, an, an attempt to breed human beings, it was uh, the darkest chapter of American medicine ever. There were 50,000 people involuntarily sterilized because they were deemed uh, unfit to breed, basically. Eugenics isn't just history. 
the spirit of the movement lives on today. Uh, Margaret Sanger was the head of Planned Parenthood. Uh, she was a very uh, fanatical in her promotion of eugenics. In fact, uh, Planned Parenthood was all about birth control for the uh, impoverished and lower classes to try to help improve the species. From Hadamar, I traveled with Dr. Weichart to Dachau, where the Nazis applied the ideas of eugenics on a massive mechanistic scale. When it was a fully functioning concentration camp, and uh, what was the purpose of it? I mean, part of it was to repress political enemies. What was the, what was the rest of the purpose? Well, beyond the repression of the political enemies, which was its purpose from the, at the very beginning, then later on it transformed into repressing uh, racial enemies. And sometimes those categories overlapped because sometimes they thought that these people were political enemies because they were inferior biologically. The war itself, was part of the Darwinian struggle for existence for Hitler. And he saw the extermination of the Jews as one of those fronts to this uh, warfare going on uh, it, as a Darwinian struggle for existence. Would you say that Hitler was insane? No, I wouldn't say he was insane. I think he uh, had imbibed some very, very wrong ideas. Uh, and in fact, I think he uh, took the logic of them uh, in certain ways that uh, brought him to uh, take very radical solutions for them. Would you say he was evil? Oh, I'd definitely say he was evil. Is there such a thing as evil? Oh, I think there is. And is there such a thing as good? Oh, definitely. And evil can sometimes be rationalized as science. Oh, sure. It's... And evil can sometimes be rational. Uh, e when it's rationalized as science, and I think when it's rationalized in this particular way in particular, I think Hitler thought he was doing good. He thought he was doing good. Oh, I think so. He thought he was benefiting. He thought he was benefiting humanity by driving evolution forward and creating a better humanity. Before leaving Dachau, I stopped by the memorial commemorating the thousands of Jews who were killed there in excruciating conditions. I know that Darwinism does not automatically equate to Nazism. But if Darwinism inspired and justified such horrific events in the past, could it be used to rationalize similar initiatives today? There's a good German expression, so fängt es immer ein. I mean, it always begins in the same way. Um, something to remember in the context of United States discussions of euthanasia and abortion. It always begins in the same way. There seems to be a, an excellent argument for getting rid of useless people by killing them. Or at least it seems excellent to the people advancing the argument. It's the love affair with death and you know the euthanasia and this movement going on, which I find appalling. And the idea is that you know immediately rid our society of anybody who might be a drain, um, and think of people in economic terms. And I think that's where some of the Darwin fits in, actually. It's a, just a devaluing of human life. First of all, if you take seriously that evolution has to do with you know the transition of life forms and that life and death are just natural processes, then one gets to be liberal about abortion and euthanasia. All of those kinds of ideas uh, seem to me follow very naturally from a Darwinian perspective, a deprivileging of human beings, basically. Uh, and I think that people who want to endorse uh, Darwinism have to sort of take this kind of viewpoint very seriously. And, and when we see an elite, and it is an elite, an elite that controls essentially all the research money in science, saying there is no such thing as moral truth. Science will not be related to religion. I mean, it's essentially official policy of the National Academy of Science that religion and science will not be related. I mean, hey, you know, that cuts off a lot of debate, doesn't it? What's going to happen if this doesn't change? Well, I think we're watching it happen, aren't we? I needed time to think, so I traveled to the birthplace of this idea. 